Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Sayyidina wa habibina Muhammadin ibn Abdillah. Sallallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala alayhi. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن سيدنا وقرة أعيننا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق الهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم وبعد يقول الحق تبارك وتعالى إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذه عدوا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعير فنجنا يا خالق الشيطان من كيده يوسل بالإيمان وجورة السلطان والجيران يا ربنا ولفحة النيران وكل معضل عن الطاعات يا ربنا فقض لنا الحاجات وشر كل حاسد وحاسدة وكيد كل كائد وكائدة ومسل بالدين والقراءة يا ربنا ومجب الشقوة ندعو بسم الله والمهاني وآية الكرسي ذي المعاني وسورة الإخلاص ذي التمجيد وفاز من مات مع التوحيد وندع بذي على اليقين يجب ما رام من المتين مجيب يا مجيب يا مجيب فاقبل دعاء وجل قريب نسألك التسليم بالقضاء والصبر والرضا لدى البلاء بالمصطفى الشافع كل الخلق يهب الإله منطقي بالحق يا ربنا يا خالق العوالم حل بيننا وبين كل ظالم ولسي لكل من إلينا أحسنا وجازه عنا الجزاء الأحسن يا ربنا أنت ترى ما قد جرى فقسم بقهر من علينا جسر آمين Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in this ayah, ayah number six in Surah Tuhatir warns us of the enmity and the adversity, the adawa of shaitan. Inna shaitan. Inna harbi tawkidin wa naswi. Verily shaitan. Allah Ta'ala didn't say adu wa lakum. But he said lakum adu. That means shaitan has no enemy but you. Or the biggest enemy of shaitan is you. Inna shaitana lakum adu. Shaitan is a very clear and open enemy. If you have an open enemy, you better consider him as an enemy. Fattakhidhu aduwa. إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعير إنما حرف إنما ل ل أداة حصر meaning شيطان has no other job but to lead his companions to hellfire والعياذ بالله يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ So shaitan is an open enemy. Why could this ayah? Because Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi in his book that we've been reading with you or trying to comment because the book of Imam Ghazali is I mean, the writings of Imam al-Ghazali are too high for someone like me to even understand, let alone to grasp and comment. 
but we're trying to take some of the beautiful jawahir of the beautiful teachings of that pious scholar, Al Imam al Ghazali, known as Hujjatul Islam, the proof of Islam. In his book, Minhaj al Abidin, he told us about the seven awa'iq or the seven hurdles and we start with you the hurdle which he uh, divided into four he said these four things are obstacles that can block one from reaching the goal and our goal is to reach the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala to gain the success of this dunya and that which of akhirah. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala grant to all of us success in dunya and in akhirah. This morning, after Salat al-Fajr, we read the hadith of Anas radiallahu ta'ala in which he says, كَانَ أَكْثَرُ دُعَاءِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. The Hadith in Bukhari Muslim and other books of Hadith. The most frequent du'a of Rasulullah عليه الصلاة والسلام was Oh Allah, our Rabb, grant us حسنة in this dunya. Imam al-Hasan said حسنة in his dunya is عبادة in علم. علم in عبادة. Knowledge and worship of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. If one has knowledge and one spends his life worshipping Allah, he said that's success in this dunya. That's the hasan of this dunya. And he said the hasan of Akhir is Jannah. So the Prophet Sallallahu most frequent dua is to have success in this dunya and success in Akhir. And that's what Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah is trying to teach us in this beautiful book. So he said that these are, there are four obstacles. The first one we spoke about it. That was the obstacle of al-khalq, hijab al-khalq, the creatures, the people. They can block you away. They can be a barrier for us to reach the goal. And he told us different ways people can block us. Because they make you busy with things that are not necessary for you to be busy with. That's number one. And when you are busy with the ibadah, they can also block you away. They can be also a barrier from your ibadah reaching the goal. To reach the goal. Why? Because you can be showing up. Yura'una nas salatihim and he told us what to do to avoid these things. And one of the four obstacles that he said was the obstacle of dunya. Dunya. Because dunya is misleading, it's delusional. When you are in dunya, you think, this is it. It's never going to go over. If you don't think it, anything can change from one minute to the next, ask Trump. So anything can go. And I'm just mentioning Trump, but there, we all have Trump inside us. Actually, one of our scholars said, every single person has the very saying of Fir'aun, Ana Rabbukum ala. He says, we all have Fir'aun in ourselves. But Fir'aun was so bad that he couldn't hold it. He had to let it go. I am your Lord, the greatest. Because every single person wants to only have what they desire. To be served. To be taken care of. You know, whatever they want, they have it. You know, that irada, ilahi. But he said Fir'aun was there. He did. But we don't. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala grant us taqwa. So, 
The second was dunya. And the third, he said, is shaitan. The fourth is nafs. Shaitan is an enemy, as Allah says, and an open enemy. He is an enemy that does not work. Can you take care of this one, sir? Since Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala created us, Shaitan is with us. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala grant him to live until the end of this world. So there is no way that we can kill Shaitan. But there is different ways to avoid the plots of Shaitan. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala created Shaitan. And Shaitan becomes our enemy. Why Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows that Shaitan is bad and he left us with him here. There are wisdoms behind it. The first wisdom behind it is al Tila. Because Allah Ta'ala told us that he brought us to this dunya to, to, to what? To test us. So Shaitan is a what? It's a test. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So every single thing we have in this dunya, whether good or bad, is what? Test. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِكْنًا So everything is the test. Good or bad. Shaitan is among the worst and the greatest test Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala tests as well. The second thing is for us to use the means Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala give us. Allah gives, gives us means. Allah gives Shaitan Qudra. He gives him power to harm. But he at the same time gives us means to avoid the harm of Shaitan. And by avoiding the harm of Shaitan, we will pass the test. And by passing the test, we will deserve the Allah Ta'ala success in this dunya. And in Akhirah, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wants you to always be with Him, to always observe Him, to always see protection, to always get close to Him. But if he does not put any danger there, maybe you would not want to go. You would not want to know that you need that luju ila Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. When Allah ta'ala created human beings, when he told the angels, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, human beings, they saw two things in human beings. I mean, the angels, they saw two things in us. They saw that we are creatures that have ghadab and creatures that have shahwa. We have anger and we have desire. That's why they say, Atajalu fiha, man yufsidu fiha. Because of shahwa. Wa yasfiku dima. Because of what? Ghadab. Are you going to put an earth who's going to corrupt it? and shed blood. Why? Because they see these two things in us. Whoever has anger can shed blood. Whoever has uh, desire can corrupt the earth. But Allah told them, I know that which you do not know. Inni a'lam ma la ta'lamun. I put in them aql. There's intellect in them. They can think. They can see that which is good from that which is, they can recognize that which is good from that which is zero. So that aql is mana put taklif. If there is no aql, there is no taklif. We are not responsible if we don't have aql. وكل تكليف بشرط العقل مع البلوغ بدم أو حمل أو بمني أو بإنبات شعر أو بثمان عشرة حول الله. 
as Abdul Wahid bin Asher rahmatullah alayhi sa'i ala awal wajibin ala man kullifa mumakkanan min nazarin an ya'arifa Allah wa al-Rusul bis-sifati mimma alayhi nasib al-ayati then he said wa kullu taklifin bishart al-aql there is no aql, there is no taklif so Allah gives us aql to use it against the plots of shaitan so Imam Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi is showing us in his work the different ways shaitan can get into the heart of the human being so if we understand well the four things he mentions that are our enemies it is like we have a distance to travel and it is a distance of a of, of hundred miles the first 25 miles we have al khalq if we don't pay attention, we're not going to make it. We pass the 25 miles, we have dunya. 25 miles, meaning 75 miles, we have shaitan. After you pass 75 miles, you have what nafs? If you pass 25 of dunya of khalq, 25 of dunya, 25 of shaitan, 25 of nafs, you reach the goal. Imam Ibn Atayla is secondary, Rahmatullah Ali said, Lawla maya deenu. Nufus, Lola Maya Dinu Nufus, Lama Tahakat Sayyidu Sayyidi. Because there's no physical distance between us and Allah. But the distance is the distance that which of the self, the ego, the, the veil of shaitan, the veil of nafs, the veil of dunya, the veil of, of khalq. So if we know that, then we want to really focus on every single one of these four awaiq as imam ghazali rahmatullah alayhi says one of the ways he discouraged the person is yuba'id lak al qareeb he makes you believe something that is near that it is far you know, who, who are you how can you be like abu bakr how can you be like Umar? How can you be like Uthman? How can you be like Ali? How can you be like Ahmad ibn Muhammad? How can you be like Abdul Qadir al-Jili? How can you be like Sir Ahmad al-Tijan? How can you be like these awliya Allah ta'ala? Then you become what? You say, wow, oh, it's true. These people, they are extraordinary. Allah chose them. Just, I can't. If you were doing a lot to move forward, then you become lazy. Then you say, okay. Let me just do my five daily prayers. Let me just do two rakah every day because the Prophet says, So let me just do the little things and stay doing it because the Prophet says, The most beloved things to Allah are those that are constant, even if they are little. That's why I'm going to have a hadith in the Bobi In this hadith, is the Prophet encouraging us? To do that which is little, or he is encouraging us to have what we call um, continuity. Continuity. Al daymum. Al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yahfuzuna ala taqlil or ala daymum. Yahfuz ala daymum, not ala taqlil. He's he's not telling us just do two rakah and continue doing it. No, he's telling us that if you have a hizb. Yomi, you do in prayer, do never avoid it, do never miss it. But do never miss it doesn't mean keep just doing that. If you don't miss it, that will put will make you do little more and little more and little more. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, You don't want to kill yourself doing something that you cannot do all the times. But you don't want to stay also just doing Torah for your entire life. If you don't grow, you are, you cannot be, you cannot stand still. Whether you are advancing or you are going back. So, Ahabul Amma is not to stay or to continue doing that which is little. But it is to never miss what you have already started. And then from there you can build. As the Prophet said, Sa'a wa Sa'a. 
He told the Sahaba, if you were in the same state you are when you are with me, if you were to continue to be in that state, you will see the angels greeting you on the turuqat and in your beds. He said that to who? Hanbala. Hanbala is known as, as what? Rasulul Madaika. That means he applied with Rasulul When uh, When Hanbala died, who did, who did the bath? The angels. Rasul al Madaika. Because when he was going to the battle, he had Janabah. And he died in that battle. So, Shaheed al Ma'araka, no Yusuf. But he was instead of Janabah. The angels took care of him. Because he listened to what the Prophet said. He tried to be in the same state he used to be when he was with, with Rasulullah. So when Shaitan is trying to discourage us, you cannot be like Abu Bakr, you cannot be like this, you cannot be like that. Yes, I cannot be like Abu Bakr because he's a Sahabi of the Prophet. I cannot be like the Sahaba, but at least I can try. I can be with them by what? By trying. I cannot be like them, but I can be with them. As Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانِ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلِدْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ One of the scholars say, تَشَبَّهُوا إِلَّمْ تَكُوا فَتَشَبَّهُوا إِلَّمْ تَكُونُوا مِهْلَهُمْ إِنَّ التَّشَبُّهَ بِالْكِرَامِ فَلَحُوا So these are our fathers in Islam. أُولَئِكَ آبَائِي فَجِئْنِي بِمِهْلِهِمْ فَجِئْنِي بِمِهْلِهِمْ إِذَا جَمَعَتْنَا يَا جَرِيرُ الْمَجَامِعِ As Faraz Daq said to Jerry. But our Aba in Islam are the Sahab of the Prophet Are these people who came after them. Whatever knowledge and state or statue Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gives to one of the awliya, it is still there. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala still has it. He can give it to you, he can give it to me. We don't want to say, no, 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 that's it, khalas. Ada hijru, bafridahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. As-suhbah khalas. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya'ud fi alami mulki. Amma, an naqtadiyya bihim, wa nulhaq bihim, fahada ghair muhal wa ghair mustahil. So he said that, ghadab and shahwa, are among the worst ways shaitan enters the heart of the human being. Ghadab and shahwa. Ghadab and shahwa. Anger and lust. He said, anger covers the mind. When I'm angry, I don't think anymore. And it weakens it. My intellect becomes weak when I'm angry. And he said, Wa huwa baridu shahwa. Anger is the male man for lust. Wa idha da'uba al-aqlu qawiyya jundu shaitan. Wa mahma ghadib al-insanu la'iba bihi shaitan. When your intellect becomes weak, when you don't reflect, when you don't think, when you don't, you know, think twice before you do something, shaitan has power over you and will play with you. So he says, to really use our intellect when it comes to anger and lust. Anger and lust, they're not bad. You need anger, but that is mastered by aql. You need shahwa, but that is mastered by aql. When Salman said to Abu Darda, your soul has a right over you, your body has a right over you, your wife and your family has a right over you, and when they went to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet confirmed. So we have lust, but we have to put it where it is supposed to be put. We have anger. So if Shaitan, if, if uh, I don't have anger, how can I fight the enemies of Islam? How can I fight the um, soldiers of Shaitan? When the Shara'ah when the maharim Allah tabarak wa ta'ala are violated, I have to feel that anger so that I can act. But I don't follow the anger. I have to put the anger where it is supposed to be put. As the Prophet 
man takama li nafsihi qat asid ta'ayis asal the prophet says i never take revenge never took revenge for himself allahumma illa an yuntahak allahumma illa idha tuhika hurmatullah tabarak wa ta'ala but if the deen of allah is violated then la yastati'u li ghadabi ahad no one can bear the end of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the deen is violated so number two, and maybe that's what i'm going to finish with today he mentioned al hasad wal hibs you know ghadab and shahwa they are twins but hasad and hirs are also twins hasad is enemy hirs is greed because of hasad iblis was kicked out of the hadr of allah because of greed adam was kicked out of jannah so shaitan uses hasad but why shaitan was hasad one of us gonna say when shaitan disobeyed allah tabaraka wa ta'ala who was his shaitan his nafs so shaitan can do nothing if he does not work with our nafs so shaitan because he was has he was jealous had envy against adam and he applied that envy so much so that it leads to arrogance allah tabarak wa ta'ala took him out he saw himself as better than adam ana khair min khalaqtani minna wa khalaqtahu min tayy why are you giving him all these things why not me ibn ata imam ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi said that because hirs he he said Hirs and Hasad. He said they are two twins. Tau amani la yam vikkan. Al Hasad wal Hirs. Lakin al awwal sabilu li thani. The first is the path that leads to the second. He said because Hirs is a type of um, is a type of uh, spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness. When a person, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that is in Abu Dawood, Hubbuka Shay Ayyuni wa Yusun. Your love of a thing causes you to be blind and deaf. And he said, when Hasad covers it, that means he wants the ni'm of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to be taken away from a person. And when hirs covers the aql that is when a person loves more and more of what he doesn't even know we love to be here tomorrow and we don't even know what's going to happen here tomorrow that hirs when shaitan went to adam he said to him if you eat from this tree you will have two things you have kingdom and you have eternal life that's what he said to them al mulk wal khut and he called that shajara shajaratul khut shajaratul khut that's what shaitan does he will find the ugliest thing to allah ta'ala and calls it the most beautiful name when we talk about the riba today what do you, what do we call riba in choice right Allah didn't call it interest. Interest is something that is good, right? So Shaitan gives it that name, interest. Because it's interesting. It is on your interest. That's what Shaitan tells us. But riba doesn't mean interest. In, in English, riba doesn't mean interest. In Arabic, riba does, mean, does it mean fire? Today we call it fawaidul bunuk, the interest of the banks. It is not interest. It's a usury. Huh? Riba. But Shaitan said to them, if you eat from this, you have half mulk and khut. And Shaitan said to them, 
وأقول لكم إن الشيطان لكم عدو مبين. So Imam Ghazali is saying us that we need to avoid these two things. When hasad comes, we need to fight it. We have to know that if I'm applying hasad, I have no problem with this brother. I have problem with Allah. I'm telling, saying to Allah, you were wrong giving this brother what you gave him and leave me here. That's a type of kufr. That's hasad. Meaning, he doesn't deserve it. I do. Allah, you made a mistake. That's what hasad means. That's why the Prophet said, Al hasad yu yakul al hasanat kama ta'kul al nar al hatab. Kama ta'kul al nar al hatab. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam ومن الحرص يا رب العالمين هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على خير البريه رسول الله اللهم انا نسالك لأنك أنت الله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد نسألك أن لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا غرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مرضا إلا شفيته ولا عدوا إلا كفيته ولا عيبا إلا شترته ولا ميت إلا رحبته ولا شيطانا إلا غلبته وطردته عنا ولا فاسدا إلا أصلحته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا ولا خيرة إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أنت الأول فليس قبلك شيء وأنت الآخر فليس بعدك شيء وأنت الظاهر فليس فوقك شيء وأنت الباطن فليس دونك شيء فكن لنا يا أول يا آخر يا ظاهر يا باطن وليا ونصيرا أنت ولينا مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير اللهم إنا نسألك بفاتحية الفاتح صلى الله عليه وسلم الفتحة التام ونسألك بخاتمية الخاتم صلى الله عليه وسلم حسن الختام اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك ورضا نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضا الوالدين ورضا الأسياخ اللهم اجعل ما نحب فيما تحب اللهم اجعل ما نحب فيما تحب اللهم اجعل ما نحب فيما تحب اللهم اجعل في اختيارك اختيارنا ولا تجعل إلا إليك اقتراننا اللهم اجزعنا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو حزبه وجماعته ورد عن سادتنا أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن خلفهم وتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين واجعلنا معهم أمين يا رب العالمين هذا وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم وأقيم الصلاة الله